Great. Uh, happy to be here, everyone. And um, and today I am going to be sharing some view and feed updates, and um, and hopefully we will learn about some of the latest uh, latest latest thing that's going on. So let's get started. Um, so the first question a lot of people probably will be asking is what's going on in View Core. Um, we haven't had a release for quite a while. Um, and many of you probably remember that we planned on uh, smaller and more frequent uh, releases early in the year, but that did not happen. So um, here I would say, yes, this is totally on me uh, because I've been taking another detour <laughs> that's speech related. Um, this is kind of similar to how I uh, paused work on Vue 3 for a period of time to work on Vite. So hopefully this detour again ends up being something great ending something that would benefit not just few developers, but also other uh, developers, web developers uh, in, uh, in the wider ecosystem. So um, long story short is that I found myself thinking about the future of Veed and how it can become the foundation for the future generation of JavaScript apps. And in order to address some of the shortcomings that would block Veed from becoming that future foundation, um, we need to fix some of the long-standing issues that are hard to fix, but necessary in order to uh, make sure that Veet is here to stay. Veet is um, going to stay the, uh, the ideal tool for web build, uh, web build tool, the ideal web build tool for the, for the long run. So spent a lot of time thinking about what we should do and uh, decided the first step we need to do is to make its underlying bundler faster. We also need to make its underlying bundlers more consistent because uh, Veed, in fact, um, is, is depending on two different bundlers, one ES build for development and one a roll up for, for production. So, um, so we ended up thinking that we need a new bundler ideally written in a native language that is going to be significantly faster than JS bundlers. And um, it needs to have the speed of ES build, but also the maturity of rollup and a support, uh, and most importantly, have full compatibility with the current Veet ecosystem. So that higher level frameworks that's using Veet or build on top of Veet uh, can adopt Rowdown with little to no uh, friction. So. This is important, and this is not something I can do alone. So I spent a lot of time thinking about um, how we can find the right people to do this. And it ended up building a team to work on Rodan. Um, and I had to coordinate a lot of uh, different parties, interested parties, uh, making sure that you know uh, the uh, Veet stakeholders are on board, the Veet team is on board, the, Rodan, uh, the, the current rollup maintainers are on board. Uh, and get, finding the right people who are good at Rust to work on Rodeo. So all of this really consumed a lot of energy and time. And this, um, as a result, I wasn't being able to spend the usual amount of time on Vue. Um, so um, I will talk about details about Rodeo and Vue later. But for the time being, uh, the focus on the Vue side is really to establish more delegation and collaboration. Uh, on, a, on, on Vue Core repository so that Vue Core development can start moving again without me being a bottleneck, right? Uh, so I've been currently, we're working with uh, Soda, Kevin and Carlos on the core team uh, together to unblock um, issues and PRs um, and trying to get things moving again. Uh, and if any of you are interested in helping us and uh, joining the uh, PR triagent or issue triagent in the core repository, please do. Uh, we welcome all form of uh, contributions, and uh, we'd love to uh, burn down the issues and PRs in the Vue Core repository and get more releases out. So um, concretely, the first thing we plan to do next is to release patches that address outstanding P4 issues. Um, currently, most of the outstanding P4 issues have corresponding pull requests. So um, many of them have also been fully reviewed by team members. So uh, we're starting going to be merging them soon and have patches out. And 3.4 planning is also underway, with many pull requests also already reviewed and ready to be merged. So um, expect a beta for 3.4 soon. 
Uh, luckily, uh, we also have uh, spent time earlier this year to set up ecosystem CI for Vue Core. So um, we are pretty confident with the changes being landed. So, um, and that um, we also know with every PR being merged, whether it will break Nuxt or not. So if you're using Nuxt, uh, don't worry that uh, future view releases, don't worry about uh, patch releases built, breaking Nuxt uh, because we do test that on every merge. So um, now for Vite, uh, I think this is going to be um, more interesting because we just uh, talked about this uh, a bit earlier at VeetConf. So um, I'll be going over a lot of the of the things that's been going on with Vite again. But uh, I think this is going to be important because it's going to affect not just not just Vite users, but also Vue users, Nux users, and many more that's been uh, using Vite or using uh, tools that's built in, built on top of Vite. Um, so Vite has crossed 60,000 stars as I am recording this video. And I believe, wait, actually, um, this is not a record. Sorry, I'm reading from some of the recorded notes. But uh, Vite has already crossed the 60,000 stars mark. And we are uh, we crossed 7.2 million weekly NPM downloads. I believe we're, we're probably higher now. So uh, very close to almost 30 million downloads per month. Um, 4x growth in the past year. We're also seeing a lot of, um, on top of all the existing ones, including Vue, Nuxt, uh, Astro, Quick, Solid, and Svelte, that's already on the We're also seeing a lot of uh, new adoption in the wild. Storybook 7 now has first class feed support. Uh, Angular 16 is using Vite as its dev server. Preact switched its default tooling to Vite as well. Redwood, which is a React uh, meta framework, is now based on Vite. Bun is also based on, uh, well, Bun is this new jobs for runtime. It supports Vite. Uh, it's, um, it can be flaky at times, but uh, uh, Bun does promise that it, uh, it aims to maintain full Node.js compatibility. So if Vite runs on Node, it should run in Bun. And in turn, Nuxt should also run on Bun, in theory. VitePress uh, has got a new identity and look, and it's going to be 1.0 soon. And Remix, uh, another... React Meta Framework, which is probably the second pop, second most popular one in the React ecosystem, is exploring, exploring a migration to Vite. They just recently landed experimental support for Vite. So um, I believe this is going to be a reality very soon. So with all that being said, uh, we can see that Vite has grown out of the Vue ecosystem, right? It, obviously, Vite is still very uh, the central piece that supports uh, the, the modern generation of Vue 3 apps and Nux 3 apps. Uh, but it also has become the shared foundation for higher level innovations in the web ecosystem, right? Um, I think this is, um, for me, this is the, the reason sometimes I would pause the work on Vue to spend more time thinking about what Vite can do. Because uh, ultimately for me, the goal is to benefit web developers uh, as a whole. So um, if the work I do can benefit Vue developers and other web developers at the same time, then I think it can create bigger impact. Well, the bottom line is everything I do should still benefit Vue users. So I think this aligns with everything we're doing, right? Um, so Jason Miller, who is the author of Preact, actually has some high praise for Vite, says it's just so nice to have a piece of infrastructure that I can near unilaterally recommend. How to think of another tool that strikes this balance. So, um, I'm really happy that we are we're getting to this point with Beat, uh, and um, and um, I think the key here is we're striking a good balance. The 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 fact that we found a lot of valuable things that we got right in when when building things for Vue, similar to how Nuxt is in fact uh, currently uh, influencing other meta frameworks as well, right? Nitro is uh, is you know benefiting a lot of uh, other frameworks now. Un, uh, all these packages in the UnJS ecosystem is benefiting other uh, JavaScript users. So I think this um, this theme of building um, building great uh, tools in the Vue ecosystem and then thinking about how they can benefit the wider web ecosystem is uh, is a very strong trait. And I think um, it's a very strong trait of the Vue and Nuxt community. And I'm very proud of that. And I think we should keep this trend going. So. 
Um, we also, uh, the team early on this year, the Vite team, uh, summarized a, a, a list of philosophy for, for Vite. So, uh, so here is a quick summary. First of all, it, it needs to have a lean and extensible core. It should not try to do everything. It should not attempt to cover every possible use case, right? So the, the tricky part here is deciding what should go into core and what should not, right? So I think most of the time the line is between uh, something that goes into core that would benefit almost every user, right? Then it goes into core. If this benefits only a small group of people uh, in a specific case, then we should Provide the APIs to make it possible to do via plugins or in user land via configurations. The second point is pushing for the modern web, right? Uh, Vue started out only supporting ESM. And I think that was the right decision. Right? And we're, we're likely going to play a more important role in, in eventually getting the ecosystem over to full ESM and, and dealing with uh, common JS, right? So um, we're always going to keep that in mind and uh, be aware of this responsibility that we're playing in the ecosystem. And then we need a pragmatic approach to performance. Right? So being pragmatic, pragmatic means using the right tool for the right task at the right time, right? So um, early on when Veed was just starting out, it was mostly me. I didn't have time to write my own bundler. So I have to leverage uh, Rollup and uh, ESBuild came out. Uh, we noticed that, uh, you know, the production bundling and dependency pre-bundling uh, pre in development are two different concerns that can be solved by different tools. And ES Build really made the pre-bundling much, much faster than Rollup. So we ended up using both ES Build and Rollup. While that introduces different set of trade-offs, for us, it's, uh, it, gives, it gets us the most benefits. So that's what I mean by pragmatic, right? Even though we had to rely on different tools, which creates a little bit of inconsistencies here and there, overall, uh, the, the, the net benefit is great. So, um, and today, being pragmatic means thinking about what resources we have and how we can solve a problem more fundamentally, right? So I managed to find the people willing to work on Rodown uh, in order to make Veed better. And I think it is, um, and at this time, uh, we Veed has grown much larger. Veed has uh, got more adoption. It's becoming more important. It's become a more foundational piece of the web ecosystem. And that justifies bigger investment into it. And that is why we decided it's, it's a good time to start working on Rota. Right? So the next step, uh, the next point is support higher level frameworks. Uh, higher level frameworks like Nuxt, is obviously one uh, core use case for Vite. And we want to be the layer that abstracts away these shared complexities among different frameworks, right? Uh, there are a lot of things modern web, web frameworks would all need. Uh, frameworks like Nuxt, Next, or um, Remix, or StyleKit, they all need to do more or less the same thing at the lower level. So Vite is the, the layer that would abstract away those complexities for them uh, so that they don't have to reinvent the wheels. Uh, so, and the more important part is each of these higher level frameworks can then innovate in different directions at the layer that they're, they're, they're more meaningful, right? So um, their energy can be focused on, uh, on working on the things that make them different rather than make them the same. Uh, and, and the part that's the same should be delegated to beat. And finally, we want to foster a collaborative ecosystem, right? We don't consider, so innovate ecosystem even across different frameworks, people are collaborative. We don't think of each other as enemies or uh, we are, com uh, so in a way, these different frameworks are competitors, but the competition is done in a friendly and pos positive way. Uh, it's not that we want to, you know, outcompete each other and to make sure we dominate the whole market. The goal is to build something that would benefit our, uh, our target users. The, uh, the goal is to making sure that um, is to making sure that with this collaborative work, the overall web ecosystem, the overall web developer community can benefit out of it, right? So uh, this is the Veed philosophy and Matthias actually gave a talk at VeedCon for this. And uh, if you're interested, you should also check out his talk. So what's next for Veed? Um, 
I've already mentioned row down, and the current problems of beads that's being listed here are specifically why we are working on row down, right? Relatively slow production build. Uh, there is inconsistency between dev and prod environments. This is caused by ES build, um, the use of ES build and ro roll up at the same time, right? So in development, we're using ES build to pre bundle the dependencies, and in production, we're using roll up. And uh, this could cause inconsistencies, for example, the way that CJS dependencies are handled. There's also inconsistencies between how uh, CJS dependencies are handled between server-side rendering during dev and production build during, uh, uh, between dev SSR and production SSR, right? So there are a lot of issues like this we would like to see solved. And then there's the network overhead of um, bundled ESM during dev. Um, this is an interesting trait of native ESM, right? One of the reasons Vita is fast is because we are able to leverage native ESM and let the browser do a lot of work. And interestingly, the browser is able to handle multiple modules being loaded um, up to a point of several hundred, right? So once we cross that threshold, uh, there seems to be an overhead that's just, uh, that isn't possible to get rid of at V level, right? So the, this overhead usually comes at the, um, the sheer amount of uh, extra work that's associated with each HTTP request. Because for each request, it's not only the network transport, it's not just the server doing the work, it's also the browser doing the work, uh, the browser's code all the way down to kernel and uh, system calls, right? So all of those add up. So when, when the number of requests uh, adds up to a certain amount, you will see noticeable overhead. And this compounds when sometimes you have to work behind a uh, when you have to develop behind a proxy server, right? So, um, so now you have to pay double the price because um, the, you're also adding the proxy server as part of the bottleneck, right? So um, eventually we think we need to provide a mode in Veed that um, starts the server by actually bundling everything. Right. So this mode will be opt-in. So this is mostly targeting users who have app applications so large that um, applications so large that unbundled development really isn't feasible. Like that affects the initial page load speed, it affects the full page reload speed so much that uh, you'd be better off actually bundling everything up front. So this is something we do plan to offer down the road. And we also want to address the confusing SSR externals issues. We're making progress on that, but I think the more fundamental way to fix this is in fact just convert everything same, the same way consistently. Right now, we're externalizing things because uh, we want to avoid transforming modules that don't have to be transformed. Um, but that is fund fundamentally a performance concern, right? If the this SSR runtime can transform other modules fast enough, then we don't need to externalize things anymore. Uh, and then we would have these problems. So, uh, and then there's the limited control over chunk splitting. So rollup is great um, and it's mature for production bundling, but um, in terms of control over how you how the JavaScript chunks are split, right? It still doesn't really uh, offer the same level of flexibility like Webpack does, right? So. Despite Webpack being complex, it is, it is still probably the most powerful bundler in terms of controlling over how your build output should look like. Right? So we do want to add that level of control to Rollup and in the, uh, obviously by re-implementing Rollup in Rust and that is in Rowdown. So Rowdown will eventually, uh, um, on top of providing feature parity of Rollup, we also intend to enhance what Rollup currently have. And finally, the lack of first-party module federation support. This is something we also need to want to add on top of Rollup. Um, so we do currently have a community-maintained uh, V plugin that does this, but um, uh, but we do want to actually have this directly inside Rodan as a first-party feature. So the challenges with all those things is that these issues need to be solved at the bundler level. Um, we we found that ES build is extremely fast, but it's not really a good foundation to fork off from uh, because of the way its internal code is structured. 
Um, folks at the Ars Pack team actually have tried this, but um, it's challenging. It's also written in Go, which doesn't really have as large of a uh, ecosystem when it comes to writing tools for JavaScript. Um, and Rollup is mature flexible, but Rollup is in, written in JavaScript and it's still slow compared to native bundlers, right? So Rollup and ESBuild, the current dependencies of each, they are both great in their own rights, but they cannot fully replace each other. And eventually we believe the, um, the once and for, the, the way to solve this problem once and for all, for all is to write a bundler that has the speed of ESBuild and the features of Rollup. So that is why Rodown is introduced. Uh, the focus is performance with best effort compatibility with Rollup with the goal uh, to switch it uh, to it in Vite with minimal impact on end users. So what we hope to see in the future is when Rodown actually becomes usable and integrated inside Vite, Nuxt users would be able to um, have a Nuxt release that bumps, uh, bumps Vite to the version that uses Rodown underneath, and your app would work the same way, but it just got significantly faster in every aspect. Uh, the current status of Rodown is an early work in progress. Um, as I said, we managed to create a team uh, consisting of contributors with extensive experience working on RSPAC. So some of the folks from the RSPAC team are currently working on Rodown, and we have a collaboration with the RSPAC team on shared tools and features underneath. Um, both Rodown and RSPAC will be built on OXC uh, in the future. So OXC is a Rust parser, linter, and language tool chain similar to uh, Babel and Biome, but written in Rust, and it's currently the fastest JS parser that we know of. Um, we are also planning to have collaboration with Lucas, the current maintainer of Rollup, uh, to, making sure, to make sure that Rodown behavior always align with Rollup. Um, so a quick overview of the Rodown roadmap. The stage one is basic bundling. This stage, we want to replace ESBuild for dependency pre-bundling inside Vite. So the key here is common JS and ESM compatibility and the ability uh, to support, uh, and the ability to um, support ESBuild. Basically, we want to have a behavior consistency with ESBuild when it comes to handling dependencies. And this is, in fact, quite a chunk of work. We will need to port a lot of ESBuild tests uh, and making sure the behavior is consistent. Stage two will be more advanced bundling. Uh, this is more about rollup feature parity, plugin compatibility, tree shaking, advanced chunk spinning control. And um, the goal of this stage is to be able to use Rodown instead of rollup for production builds. Stage three will be built in transforms. Yes, so this is uh, similar to in scope to ESBuild where it can actually handles transformations for TypeScript, JSX, uh, and minification even in the same tool. This is also what we want to do in Rodown. So the scope of Rodown will in fact be um, similar to how Rollup and ESBuild merge together, right? So syntax lowering, essentially you can specify a target and then use um, Rodown to also uh, transform some of the newer syntax into older ones to support legacy browsers. And finally, we want to uh, rustify Vite. When Rodown is done, uh, it will expose a plugin container through its API, and Vite will start introducing a Rust part that uses Rodown as a dependency. So this way, we can then start porting some of the core Vite logic over to Rust uh, we want to do this very carefully because we do believe that the flexibility of JavaScript is important in keeping Vite core iterating fast. So uh, the, the target of the porting will likely be focused on parts that are really, really stable and well-defined and also performance sensitive. So for example, uh, the uh, import analysis plugin in the Vite core is going to be, it, it is um, caught on every single module that Vite processes is very, performance sensitive, but it's also relatively stable. So that's a good candidate for porting, right? We will do this uh, on a case-by-case -case basis and making sure that we don't compromise the, uh, the maintainability and the, um, the um, we don't want to fastly increase the barrier of contribution for Vite core by making everything beat. We want to do this in a pragmatic way. Again, uh, balancing the barrier of contribution versus the performance gains that we can get out of it. So 
Uh, again, shout out to ESBuild and Rollup. These are really, really great projects, and Veet wouldn't be possible without them. But um, as we said, we thought hard and thought about all the possible solutions, and we still believe that Rodeo uh, would be the ideal solution for Veet in the long run. So, but we are standing on the on the shoulders of these giants. So, shout out to them. And finally, for next users, uh, so. The, the main takeaway of this all this is that uh, Rodeo will make Veet and Nitro faster because Nitro currently also uses Rollup in this build, which can both be uh, replaced by using Rodeo. Right? So Rodeo will make both Veet and Nitro faster. And faster Veet and faster Nitro means faster Nuxt. So um, I hope this would um, benefit all the Nuxt users and make your builds much faster. So thank you, and uh, we should, um, I think the next one will be a uh, beat panel. So looking forward to that. Yes, first we have questions for you. All right. Uh, is Veet going to be working with Bun? Um, by working with? I'm, I'm not sure uh, if the question means collaboration or v, is Veet going to run on Bun? If the question is le the latter, then yes, Veet already runs on Bun. Um, it's just uh, Bun's support for Node.js compatibility can be incomplete in some cases uh, as new versions of Node come out or as uh, Veet changes or upgrades its dependencies. Sometimes things can break, but um, it's on bun to making sure the compatibility claim is correct. So, um, so technically it should. Um, and and in fact, if um, when when Rodown actually becomes the main bundler inside Veet, I think the reason to use bun over Node.js to run Veet would be less significant because. Um, because the main logic will actually run in the Rust side rather than in the Node.js JavaScript or Bun's JavaScript engines. Uh, so you can use either um, and uh, both should work. Yeah. Great, thank you. All right. Uh, how has using TypeScript shaped how Veet is built and maintained? Um, Veet was written with TypeScript from day one. So I think it, it is critical to use something like TypeScript for a code base like Veet. Uh, we have multiple collaborators. It's moving very fast. We have a lot of tests, a lot of files and different modules. I think it would be a maintenance nightmare if we didn't use TypeScript. Um, I don't, I'm not sure how I can say it's shaped how Veet is built and maintained because I I think TypeScript is really just a tool. It depends on how you use it, but um, I think it it is definitely uh, very important and uh, critical for the launch and maintenance of Veet. I like how you said that, how it's uh, helped with having the different types and things to be able to do across. So I think that does talk about the shape and the usability of it. So thank you for, for that one. Uh, can you tell us a bit more of is defined model happening and what's going yes. on there? Uh, yes, we're actually planning to from, uh, graduate it from experimental status. Uh, but we're having some final discussions inside the team regarding some of the finer details of the thing. But overall, uh, defined model, uh, in it's... Um, I mean, the, the problem to solve is real. So we're definitely gonna land it in some form um, once we settle down the final details. Yeah. Great, all right. And any performance tips working uh, for working with multiple component libraries in a Veet project? Um, I think this is a bit vague. So uh, I think this would, um, I would need more context to give meaningful answer to this because. Um, Do you like, maybe on on this one, like uh, if somebody is wanting to use multiple component libraries, do you see anybody run into a lot of issues or something that happens a lot that would make it harder for them to use multiple component libraries with feet? 
Um, so first of all, I think we need to clarify whether it's about development performance or production performance, right? Okay. I think if we're talking about production performance, then my suggestion is don't use multiple component libraries. Fair. Because they're going to be heavy. Uh, you probably want to focus on one set of library that suits your need well and um, making sure it, it has good tree shaking. Uh, only use the components that you really need. Uh, think about code splitting and all that, right? Um, it, when it comes to development performance, then uh, I'm not sure if there are any, you know, specific things. Probably just add more code splitting so that you don't load all of them at once. That's a good call out. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So both uh, Vue and Vite require extensive maintenance. What's it like to work on them? Uh, and I would just say, what's life as a maintainer like? Uh, and how do you find balance in life? Uh, it is tough, right? Uh, so like I said, it's, uh, it's challenging to decide what you should work on at a given time. Sometimes I plan on say I want to work on Vue for the next few months, but then I end up jumping on another idea that I find more, probably producing more impact for the time being. So I ended up doing that for a very long time. Um, at the same time, I think my role in the ecosystem have, have gradually changed over time. Uh, I think in the early days, it's mostly just me committing and pushing code. Uh, mostly me addressing the issues. So some, like I remember in the early days working on Vite, I was literally uh, working 12 hours a day and closing like 20, 30 issues a day. Uh, but nowadays, you know, we have a team, we have a very capable team uh, fixing issues, uh, merging PRs, even shipping releases. Uh, and a lot of these can be done without me even getting directly involved. And in, in a lot of cases, I'm reviewing things, trying to unblock people, thinking about the higher level directions, what's, where we should go next, where, uh, how can we get the people's incentives aligned to work on the thing that would benefit more users, benefit the project. Uh, and it's, uh, it's similar on the view side. Um, I think for a very long time, I'm the main person that is pushing code, committing code, and merging PRs in Vue, but I do want to change that. I do want to evolve that in a direction that's more similar to how Vite is working nowadays. Um, so uh, despite, you know, whether I like it or not, my role is slowly transitioning from someone who's writing code every day to someone who's uh, trying to get more people work together on, a common, on common goals. Uh, and I do get a lot less time to actually write code myself, but I think that at this current stage of, of my career, I'm probably producing a bigger impact by helping and unblocking other people rather than directly committing code. I still do want to, right? I still need to do that, but, uh, but it's just the responsibilities have changed a bit. As a follow-up with this one, is there anything that... Per, helped prepare you to start handing off this stuff? Because I, I know, at least from personal experience, if I have a project, I'm like, don't touch it. It's my baby. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it's challenging. Yeah. Was there anything that helped you prep that uh, in, in being able to hand off projects? Um, I'm still struggling now with Vue, to be 100% honest. Uh, I think I did a much better job with Vite. Uh, on this front, uh, and I think a lot of times it's um, it also depends a lot on um, thinking about the problem early on and uh, be lucky enough to find the find the people who are willing to step up and take over things uh, proactively. Um, I think it's very difficult to sort of. Um, it's very difficult to find some uh, to to just pick someone and say, "Here, uh, you need to start taking over this part of responsibility for an open source project." I don't. I think most of the time it doesn't happen that way. Most of the time, the open source collaboration it's someone who's who just naturally uh, gets you know fascinated by a 
by a project, and then uh, contributes to it, and then slowly uh, he they get so familiar with a part of the code and start being the expert on their front. And then uh, everybody noticed that, and everybody trusts them on that. And naturally, they step up and become sort of, uh, you know, the um, someone uh, being responsible for, for that part of the project, right? Uh, I think it, a lot of times this is an organic process, and I find that um, while I hope, I you know, there's an easy way to make this happen, but I think a lot of times it depends on having the right people step up at the right time. Yeah. Thank you. I, I feel like uh, there's still some curiosity and what maintainers have to do or growing your own, uh, mm -hmm. like, there, there's so much behind that. So I appreciate you uh, answering the added question. Next one, are you planning to implement Rust not only for bundling, maybe in a view core somehow? Um, so this is a bit different because build tools you run on your own machine or on your CI servers, you don't actually ship them to a user, uh, end users, right? Shipping Rust compiled code to end users is a different story because first of all, you need to compile them to WebAssembly. WebAssembly, Rust to WebAssembly isn't as fast as Rust to actual native code. That's the first thing. The second thing is uh, for an, uh, frameworks that actually run in user land code, um, there is still the overhead of interacting with the DOM. The DOM is actually the main bottleneck, and JavaScript is, in fact, fast enough in most cases. Uh, so I don't really think uh, using Rust inside uh, a framework like Vue would actually help that much, or I don't think it would be really worth it. Uh, some potential things we can explore is maybe having a Rust version of the view single file component compiler. Uh, that is something we have been exploring. But uh, again, there comes the challenge of maintaining two versions, one in JavaScript and one in Rust, and they need to stay consistent. And that's a lot of burden. So I think for the, sh for the near term, we're probably still just kind of focusing on uh, using uh, JavaScript and TypeScript on the view side, uh, and the Rust will be mostly on the build tool side. Great, thank you. And last question for now, because I know that you'll come back as part of the panel. So any updates on if, when reactive props destructure will be out of experimental? Yeah, we still have some disagreements on this one inside the team. So we're trying to resolve that. Uh, but uh, yeah, no definitive timeline for this one at the moment. Okay, great. Well, that is all the questions we have for you at the moment. But while you're hanging out backstage, we have a few things to go over and see you back shortly.